No, I didn't. I. I mean, you guys asked me to do this. I didn't really want to have to take that much time out to do it. I kind of just wanted to do what I was going to do anyway. Like, at this point on a Tuesday night, this is exactly what I'm doing. So, this is the first level of the game, so I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident that I'll be able to, to pass through it without um, getting caught. The point of this game is to, is to not get caught. Circling me right now, kind of... SHIT! I'm not even playing this on extreme right now, I'm playing it on normal. Which is making me angry. Who's this guy? <laughs> Calling me a noob. There we go, okay good. Uh, Funeral Vantage just got back from tour, right? Yeah, we just got back. Um, we did a little short East Coast run down to South Carolina. Back in the beginning of October. It's the end of October right now, so it's been about a month since we've been back, and it was an awesome tour. Now the elevator's coming uh, right now, and I can get on this and go up to the next level, which is exciting. Ooh, baby. Okay, so you guys released a new album over the summer, Body is Dead. Can you tell us more about the making of the album? I had been laid off from my job uh, previously, like the week before I started recording, and I decided I, I wanted to sort of document the way I was feeling in uh, making an album. And through that, I kind of just like kind of was able to buckle down without having to go to work every day. I was able to buckle down and just do as much uh, recording as possible in the in the time allotted. Recorded vocals, guitars, synths, and uh, bass at my apartment. And I had um, Chelsea Figueroa, who used to play keyboards in our band, um, do extra vocals on it. And she was the only other person that really performed on the album besides me. But that was fun. I had a good time recording it. You recently released the demos for Body Is Dead. Any big differences between the demo and the final cut? And Metroid 30 Cent says, get to the Choppa, LOL. <laughs> okay, so, um, the, the, first of all, Metroid, the, the point of this part of the game is not to get to the Chopper, but is to wait until the Chopper leaves so that you can sneak behind it and get into the, um, the nuclear storage facility behind it. So, to answer Spark and Fizz's question, uh, you released, recently released the demos for Body is Dead. Any differences between the demo and the Final Cut? Really? No. I, uh, I normally... The reason I decided to release the demos is because I really like listening to uh, the demo versions of albums. I know that Smashing Pumpkins and uh, Smashing Pumpkins released the album of uh, Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness demos, and I really like listening to that because it kind of kind of gave a glimpse into Billy Corgan's like writing style and stuff like that. And that that kind of that sort of thing interests me, like uh, making indie albums and how classic albums are made. AOS says that he played the vowel for his mom, she liked it, and the artwork too. I'm glad, AOS. Your lyrics frequently address a you. Who is, that that you. who is it that you're talking to all the time? I guess I'm talking to like the proverbial the proverbial you. I'm talking to like... It can be anyone really. I don't know. I, I, I don't often... It can be me even. Like the you in, in the songs is often me really. Like I'm often um, uh, writing the songs and singing the songs from another person's perspective onto myself. As I'm crawling through these uh, these events, Kara loves Eugene. She wants a hairless cat. Eugene is somewhere around here. I have a, I have a hairless cat, and he's um, actually if you look, you can see him on the couch back there. He's a nice guy. He'll probably come over here in a second. Who's the hot green girl? I'm not sure who you're talking about. You're talking about me on the screen because <laughs> I'm wearing green. Or are you talking about green uh, as in the radar, like the DARPA chief? On this on the screen, Metroid. There is a girl. I'm gonna try and uh, actually for specifically for Spark and Fizz. I'm going to try and um. There's a an Easter egg in this game. If you pass by, there's two cells in this game. One has a girl. One has a guy in it. If you pass by the girl's cell by her little uh, wind vent and look down three times, you get to see her in her underwear. So I'm gonna try and do that right now on camera for you guys. It's gonna take a while, but I figure we have some time. We got a couple more. Um, so it seems like you like video games. Are there any video game references in the songs? Uh, yeah, they're um, actually scattered throughout the uh, the whole record. I put in a couple of samples from um, Metal Gear and also a couple of samples from a, a certain anime. I don't want to even talk about the anime, though, because if I talk about it, then there's actually a big part of the record that kind of gets spoiled. What are you listening to these... Spark and Fizz asks, what are you listening to these days? Any guilty pleasures? I don't feel guilty about any of this, but I'm really into the new Owl City record a lot. I got kicked out of Al City, the Al City show the other day. Um, 
and someone's gonna go see him and I try to crowd surf and security kicked me out. I've been getting into, she's doing one-handed push-ups now, guys. I've been getting into goth music a lot lately. Not goth, that's so stupid to say. Um, uh, like, I guess sadder music. I got tickets to see The Cure in next year in June, and there's a band called The Twilight Sad opening for them, and I really, I'm really into them right now. What gets you through the winter? Um, beer gets me through the winter. And uh, staying indoors, I don't like being up, I don't know. Playing shows, you get really hot playing shows, so playing shows is another one. That's good, gets me through the winter. So you used to drum in a hardcore band, Free Beer, and uh, what are the expected influences in front of? Uh, I don't really have any, it's really strange, because uh, the, the music, I wasn't writing guitar in that band, I was only really writing the drums, and uh, that was like the last sort of like full band effort. We got her, there we go guys. Um, that was the last full band effort that I had. Influences didn't really bleed over from that band. I was really listening, I was listening to a lot of, uh, like a lot of Minor Threat and a lot of, just like Ian McKay bands, like uh, Embrace and stuff like that. But my influences in hardcore didn't really bleed over in front of musically, but it, it influenced me in like the whole kind of like do-it-yourself DIY, like do it, uh, doing something all by myself sort of recording and uh, managing style. Like I manage my own band, I record everything for my band and I, I, everything kind of goes through me before it gets out. And that's kind of a, that's kind of a hardcore thing through and through is, is um, sort of being yourself, I guess, and making sure that no one, uh, no one kind of gets in the way of your vision. I'm, I'm, I'm strangely big in Japan. It's really strange how um, I'm bigger in Japan than I am here, arguably. Which is strange. Buy the tape from Miles Apart Records in Japan. I think it might be actually, it's actually sold out in Miles Apart Records, but you can, I think they distroed it to a couple places, a couple record stores in Japan. So you can buy it there. Yeah.